West Broadcasters present the perfect season. A salute to the 1967 NCAA champion UCLA Bruins. Brought to you by Richfield, makers of Richfield Boron Gasoline, the finest premium that costs you no more. I doubt if ever a team in the history of intercollegiate athletics has been under such great pressure uh, from the time uh, you started practice uh, until the end of the season, you might say. And I doubt if any individual has ever been under any more pressure than Louis uh, Alcindor was under. His name is John Wooden, and this is the story of how he and a team of remarkable young men lived the pressurized experience of the perfect season. Good evening. I'm Fred Hessler. Remember the great stall, the picture-perfect dunks of Lou Al Sindor, victory number 30 over the Dayton Flyers? Well, tonight, you'll relive those moments and meet the six players who were involved in every game of the perfect season, a season that had something everybody talked about, but few experienced, an intangible called pressure. These young men, with different backgrounds and varied personalities, reacted to it differently. Pressure... I think was was in the people and the coaches. You know, I think they felt the pressure more than than the players. Uh, for instance, after a game, uh, if we were to talk about uh, the game that, that we had just won or or the game to come, I think the pressure would have mounted. But uh, after each game, no one at when we left the gymnasium, no one even even talked about basketball. We talked about just anything rather than basketball, and that way the pressure didn't even. Build up. If we ever, I felt that if we ever did get in a tight spot, then there would be real pressure. And if we did get in a tight spot, I would go to Lou. I'd pass the ball to Lou. And I had complete confidence in him. So that uh, this kind of relieved the pressure. Now, I think I'd, I would really feel pressure if uh, a couple of our, you know, first string players had fouled out of a game. And then it would kind of more or less fall on me. Then there would be pressure. But as it was, I didn't feel as much as. Uh, a lot of people think there was pressure. Uh, well, it was great most of the time. After a while, I, you know, kind of accepted it to be the way things were. And uh, they never bothered me after then. I think the pressure that would mean something would be pressure that came from within. And I think the fact is that if we had any pressure, it was just to play well and, and to do as well as, to play as well as we were capable of doing. And Coach Wooden always emphasized that all he expected of us was the best that we could give. And I think that when you look at things in this light, if you know you're going to give your best and that the people that are important are going to be satisfied, the externalities of uh, press and, and public opinion don't really make too much difference because, you see, you have to be able to look at yourself and you have to be able to have the respect of the people that are close to you. And I think that's much more important than the, these other factors. And I think we, we had this all season. And I think that we didn't really have as much pressure as people thought because we run under this, this sort of a goal. So I think pressure was probably, you know, overrated, although it was there. The acknowledged team leader was the smallest of the Bruins and the only one with experience. Mike Warren accepted the challenge and won respect from his coach and teammates. Warren is the true leader type. Uh, you need a boy such as Mike on every team. I think that uh, a team that does not have good leadership, uh, regardless of the abilities on the team, is going to be in trouble. There will be a times when they may look great just because of uh, pure ability. But if they don't have someone that can be the leader and guide them at times when uh, uh, things are a little more difficult, they're going to run into hard times. Mike has natural basketball sense. He's an unselfish boy. He has the definite interest of the team at heart, is a fine passer, and sees the open man extremely well. All of these things uh, uh, tend to build up uh, the proper uh, team attitude. You look at him and his legs are moving. You can't see his legs are kind of in a blur. He takes so many little steps when he runs around. He can handle the ball probably as well as anybody I've ever seen with either hand. And he can handle it at full speed, which is uh, one of his greatest uh, attributes. 
But uh, the thing that first amazed me when I first saw him play was his shooting ability. I thought I'd never seen such uh, consistent shooting, not only in making it, but his form was so consistent. He's the floor leader, and uh, he makes us uh, go just about, you know, he comes up with a good pass when you need it, and uh, kind of like just gives us a little bit of impetus on our offense. I think more than anyone on our team this year, he sacrificed his scoring potential and ability to help the rest of us, and particularly, particularly to help uh, sophomores such as myself and Lynn the start of the year get confidence in ourselves by passing up some of his shots to set us up more often and I think he was just amazing what he gave of himself to make this the team that it was I think that was one of the most crucial and overlooked factors of this season he can seem to dodge a guy when he's going his fastest and not even uh, think about it I've seen him times when he gets the ball and there'll be a guy right behind him and he'll have his back to the man he'll turn and then you'll still be able to dodge the guy, not even knowing he's behind him. I think this is his great ability to handle the ball at uh, very fast speed. Significant events took place during the conference season for the Bruins. The first at Pullman, Washington against Washington State. The Bruins are in the dark uniform, and at this stage, they are trailing by one point, and Lou Alcindor is sidelined with four fouls. This was our first road game. All of our other games prior to this time, including the uh, L.A. Classic, had been held in Pauley Pavilion. And with a young team, you're not sure exactly what's going to happen when you take them on the road for the first time. And particularly when you go to a place like Pullman, Washington, where we've had trouble up there with real fine teams before, and many teams have had uh, uh, trouble up there. It's a difficult place to play. The fans are very rabid and support their team tremendously well, and that has a decided effect, and I think makes Washington State play extremely well. Uh, therefore, I was concerned about how we would play. We met pressure for the first time up there, and actually it's the only game during the entire season that we trailed in the second half, and we were behind by one point for a few seconds at any rate in the second half of that ball game. So when we came back after being behind in the second half and with Lou in foul trouble, and won by nine points and apparently had the ball game in hand in the last couple of minutes. Uh, that was a most gratifying win and I think uh, meant a lot to us as well. USC had lost twice to the Bruins before suddenly changing the strategy. Although difficult to realize at the time, the game may have helped the Bruins more than any other during the season. We had been expecting the stall game uh, prior to that time and thought we were ready for it, but there's nothing like uh, meeting it in competition, and we hadn't yet met it in competition. When we first met it, then we met it uh, from a team that had very fine personnel and executed it very well. And uh, I felt at that time perhaps uh, our boys, uh, subconsciously at any rate, had uh, become a little satisfied with themselves and perhaps a little complacent in spite of anything we could do. I believe this gave them a scare, so to speak, and I think our practices following that time uh, were better. I believe the boys worked harder, and they realized now that something could happen to them. At this point of the game, the Trojans decide to hold the ball for one final shot. The score is tied. If they make it, they'll pull the college upset of the year. If they miss it, it goes into overtime. Hewitt's shot missed. The Bruins won in overtime 40-35. to 35. The hero was the team's sixth starter, Bill Sweet, but he was almost the GOAT. Sweet will comment about the game. Wooden will comment on Sweet. And the Bruin players will comment on the game's importance as the overtime action continues. And when I first got in there, I was uh, fairly tight because I hadn't played at all in the first half, and I wasn't very warmed up when I went in. I remember before I really got warmed up, I first thing time I got the ball, I think I threw the ball at the referee. See, I saw him out of the corner of my eye, and I thought he was a teammate. And this uh, was the first mistake I made in the game, and I made one later when I took a shot. I came on. Uh, from the top of the key, I broke down low, and Lou was on the other side of the basket, and I received a pass from Lucius Allen. And I, and I was going uh, away from the basket towards the baseline, 
and I took a, a short shot, which uh, the coach later said I shouldn't have taken. He told me that he, he wanted to take a good setup shot because we were in a good position at that time. I tried to atone for it, and I, uh, I was fortunate to steal the ball on a bad pass. I uh, anticipated a cross-court pass, and I stole the ball then. And then on the press, I uh, stole the ball from uh, their, their guard, Jennings, on the dribble. He lost the ball, rolled out in front of him when I, I came up and stopped him. And then I uh, got the ball back right in a row. It was two quick plays like that that kind of turned the tide, and I was very fortunate to be in the right place when these things happened. Uh, I remember one particular game when I was about ready to wring his neck. And if I could have got to him at that particular time, uh, uh, I'm sure that I'd have been tempted. But before I had that opportunity, other events took place which pleased me immensely. <laughs> there was a steal, and he went under and scored. And there was another steal, and the ball passed off to another man who was fouled, and he got two free throws, and it enabled us to preserve our victory string and win in the overtime against our rival. But Bill does certainly stir up a lot of action while he's in there. Up until the SC game, we, we really hadn't played well together as a team. And uh, facing a stall, uh, such as the stall that SC used, was something new to us as a team. And we really felt that in order to, to win or defeat anybody else that used the stall, we were going to have to regroup and, and get ourselves together, so to speak. And this from then on, I think uh, we really started playing well as a team. After the USC game, we found out that we had to work on a few other things, and then there, there was, you know, in, in basketball, there are things that you can still get beaten by no matter how good you are. So we uh, worked the rest of the year on the stall, working against the stall in practice, and then this uh, enabled us to get up for the games in the future. We, uh, we were going along pretty well at that time, and... Uh, I guess we got a little bit complacent and relaxed a little bit. Or, uh, you know, we weren't just doing the best we could. And uh, that sort of like brought us down to earth and made us realize that we had to play together and uh, pool all our resources and try as best we could to win. I just go out there to win the game. I do everything I can to win the game, you know. I try to put the ball in the hoop and I try to play some good defense. I don't always come up to far, but that's what I'm out there to do. Lou Alcindor was the most publicized of the Bruins. He was a tremendous sophomore star and the drawing card for the Bruins who played to over 350,000 fans, a collegiate record. Lou is the, probably the deepest boy on the entire team. Uh, Lou uh, is a deep-thinking individual. Uh, he's well-read, and uh, he's a studious type. Uh, he's, uh, I think, a most intelligent young man. He's uh, concerned about many things other than just basketball. He's concerned about the problems uh, that confront us in the United States today and the problems that confront the world. Uh, he's uh, just a deep-thinking individual. I'm sure that he puts basketball in the proper perspective. He doesn't put it ahead of his academic uh, work, and I don't think any boy should. Uh, he uh, uh, would appear to be moody uh, in as much as uh, he's not uh, a smiling type of an individual, as Lucius is, for example.